Good day everyone, this is Alex Chu from iDeck. In today's tutorial, we will see how to decode uh, the diagnostic pulse from our safety relay HR6S series by using our PLC. So uh, in today's tutorial, we are going to use FC6A+, Plus, but this thing can be easily achievable by any iDeck PLC. All right. So this is what we would like to achieve at the end of this tutorial all right so as you can see uh, let me give a very simple uh, introduction of our new hr6s safety relay so all hr6s safety relay from idec regardless of model they all comes with one terminal called z1 okay and this z1 constantly uh, is constantly giving out a diagnostic pulse output and in this pulse output consists of uh, the diagnostic information of the uh, safety circuit safety devices connected to this hr6f safety relay okay so in this tutorial we will see how to decode okay we connect this z1 uh, out pulse output to our uh, fc6a plus plc and we will write a simple program to decode the diagnostic code so that uh, by using this simple program, we know the status uh, of this safety relay, All right? Okay, so we will take reference from the HR6 safety relay manual, okay, to know uh, the meaning of each diagnostic code. And from there, we know the status of the HR6 safety relay. And before that, before we go into detail of the program, uh, how to do the decoding, I would like to uh, give a very simple analysis uh, to you guys on the diagnostic, uh, the characteristic of the diagnostic pulse coming out from uh, Z1 terminal of HR6S. So this uh, diagram shows one of the example of the diagnostic pulse coming out from HR6S safety relay. All right, so as you can see that. Uh, for a full cycle of diagnostic pulse, it actually uh, consists of 10, 10 bits, okay? With the first four bits, it's actually a start code, right? Where, whereas the, the, the subsequent six bit is actually a diagnostic code, okay? So this forms uh, one complete cycle of the diagnostic pulse. And this is actually, uh, this pulse is actually having a frequency of five hertz. Okay, how do I get this 5 hertz? It's actually, uh, if you do a simple calculation, these 10 uh, bits is actually uh, require uh, 2 seconds of period okay, to complete. So that means in 1 second, uh, it will have 5 bits. So this means it's 5 hertz. All right. And then you can see that uh, this diagnostic pulse cycle uh, keep repeating itself, okay? So that means uh, one cycle is followed by another cycle and so on, all right? So if you take a closer look, if you would like to extract the diagnostic code out of this uh, continuous pulse, there is one very important uh, characteristic which, can, which we will use later in our uh, PLC program, is that if you notice carefully, you can see this diagnostic code, this six-bit diagnostic code actually is surrounded by two start code. Okay, two zero zero one zero 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 one zero. So this is a very important characteristic. So later on in our logic, we will specifically identify this pattern. Okay, when we see there is a uh, within this uh, coming uh, fourteen bits, if the pattern of the uh, piles is initiated and ended with 0010, we will then tag the six bits in between. And one last char important characteristic of this diagnostic pulse is the pulse width. Okay, so you can see that the pulse width of uh, diagnostic pulse coming out from Z1 terminal is actually uh, 200 millisecond. All right, so how, how do I get the 200 millisecond? It's actually uh, you can see that if 10 bits, 10 pulse require 2 seconds, right? 2 seconds divided by 10 bits, so 1 bit is 200 milliseconds. 
So this is a very important characteristic as well because later on we will uh, do sampling at the middle of the pulse width. Okay, at the middle of the pulse. Alright, so after we have understand the characteristic of the diagnostic pulse generated a, on Z1 terminal of HR6 safety relay, so we can now look into detail how we can come up with a program to decode this diagnostic pulse. Alright, so I have already prepared a very simple program consists of four rounds. So you can see it's pretty short and simple. So I, I'm going to explain uh, the, the purpose of each of the rank, okay, so you guys can understand. But of course, there are many other ways to write a program to decode uh, the diagnostic powers. This is just one of them. Right, so let me start with uh, rank number one first. So <clears throat> the purpose of having this rung number one actually is to detect the first pulse generated from Z1. So okay, why is this uh, rung important? Why do we need to detect the first pulse uh, from Z1? Okay, so you can imagine in this example, I have my Z1 connected to I4, okay, input number five of my uh, FC6A plus PLC. Okay, so we do not know when uh, I powered up my HR6S safety relay or PLC. So HR6S can be powered up first, followed by uh, our PLC. Same goes to the another way around. So let's say, let's say my PLC input point start detecting. Uh, start detecting the diagnostic pulse from hr 6 z one terminal at this point, okay? Right, so once I my I4 uh, detect uh, the coming uh, falling edge or racing edge, which is exactly uh, line number one and number two is doing, so immediately I set an M0 bit, okay? This is to tell, yes, I have already uh, see the first racing edge or fall, flow falling edge of the diagnostic pulse and you can see that at line number three actually after i detect the, the first uh, edge of the diagnostic pulse actually i do a, a time on delay timer i have i include an on delay timer with 100 milliseconds so why do i need to do such delay in my program it is actually you can see that after I have detected the first edge, I give a delay of 100 milliseconds, so which brings me exactly to the middle of the pulse. So the purpose I'm doing that is because I want to sample, I want to read the level or signal of the pulse right in the middle of the, the pulse. I do not want to read the pulse signal over here or over here, which might give me uncertain signal. All right. So same goes to uh, this moment, if let's say my POC input point reads the uh, the diagnostic pulse at this moment, let's say my POC start up later, okay, when I see the first edge, okay, I'm going to give a 100 millisecond uh, on delay, which means I, I will start to see the pulse signal at this point, all right, so this is exactly uh, the function of rung one in our POC. Okay, right. So now come to rung number two. So the objective of having rung number two is just as simple as generating a two hundred millisecond pulse. Okay, a continuous two hundred millisecond period pulse. Okay, so you can see that our pulse width is two hundred milliseconds. So this is the reason why we want to generate. Uh, uh, 200 millisecond pulse in order to read this diagnostic pulse accurately right in the middle of the pulse so going back to the uh, example given just now if let's say my PLC start detecting the diagnostic pulse from uh, Z1 terminal at this point okay I will wait for the first edge either raising edge or falling edge and after that I give a delay of 100 millisecond before I start generating my 200 millisecond pulse, which will give me something like this. Alright, so 
at each intersection point between this 200 millisecond pulse and the diagnostic pulse, I'm going to check and read the diagnostic pulse. So exactly as this. I'm going to take this level and save them into my uh, POC memory for later on analysis. All right. So this is exactly uh, the purpose of this uh, round number two logic which is to generate a 200 millisecond pulse at memory, bit memory M1, which means this bit M1 will be toggling between 0 and 1 every 200 millisecond. All right. Okay, so let us proceed to the next round of the logic, which is round number 3. All right, so this round number 3, in this round number 3, we are using a special instruction called shift left instruction. So why do we uh, use this instruction? So let me explain further. So for example, if we start reading the, if our POC start reading the diagnostic pulse at this point, okay, when we see the first edge, okay, we give a 100 millisecond of delay and after that, we start generating a uh, 200 millisecond pulse, okay? And in every uh, racing edge and falling edge of this uh, M1 200 millisecond pulse, we are going to check the diagnostic pulse coming into our PLC input point, okay? And after we check the signal level of the pulse, okay? we actually uh, fit all this signal, whether it's one or zero, we actually fit in bit by bit into D0 data register by using this shift left instruction, all right? So if you want to see in detail how this, uh, how is the operation of this instruction, it is actually look like this. You see, whenever, uh, during each raising and falling edge of uh, the uh, M1 bit, we are going to shift the uh, the signal level that we see into D0 data register bit by bit. Okay, let me repeat this again. All right, so bit by bit, okay, into D0. And this process actually keep repeating. It won't just stop at the bit number 11 shown in this slide. It's going to keep repeating itself until uh, bit 13 of uh, D0. Okay? Alright. Keep repeating like this. Alright? Okay? Until bit 13. And why do we only use 6, 14 bits of uh, D, uh, D0 instead of all the 16 bit inside D0? So this, in, for, to explain this, we have to go back to the characteristic uh, of the diagnostic pulse that I introduced to you guys just now. So just now I have shared with you guys a very important pattern of this diagnostic pulse. Okay, the meaningful 6-bit diagnostic pulse in between is actually surrounded by 4 bits of uh, start code as well as ended by 4 bit of start the next start code also so this is the reason 4 plus 6 plus 4 okay total 14 bits into D0 data register so this is the reason why we only use up to uh, bit 13 which is total 14 bits of this uh, D0 after shifting the diagnostic pulse bit by bit into D0 data register we are actually making use of this uh, end instruction and compare instruction to identify whether uh, bit 10 to bit 13 and also bit 0 to bit 3, they are actually 0010. Okay, so we use end. Okay, we end with this uh, 15375 in decimal. But in binary, it is actually like this because we are only concerned, we are only uh, interested Okay, in bit 10 to bit 13, as well as bit 0 to bit 3. So we would like to see okay, whether the, the pulse that is keep coming into D0, the moment 
when the 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 six the fourteen bits of the pounds they are uh, initiated or or and ended with zero zero one zero. So at that particular moment, we are interested in the six bit pounds between bit four and bit nine. So this is exactly the reason why after we end with this 15375, immediately we compare with, uh, we compare the result. Okay, this is the result after we end. And we immediately we compare this result, whether it is 2050. So if you turn this 2050 decimal number into binary, it is actually 00, 0010 out of this 6 bit 0 and ended with 0010. So if, if let's say we identify uh, um, the output of this compare is, uh, is what we want, immediately we turn on this M3 okay, to show that the right code actually, the right code with the right position actually already come in, into D0. And in that moment, we will go into round 4, which is 2 round 4 of the program which is to extract the bit number 4 to bit number 9 inside uh, this D0 All right. before I shift into round number 4 uh, let me give you guys uh, two very obvious example what round number 3 is doing okay right this is the first example you can see that uh, Diagnostic piles is constantly being moved, uh, shifted into D0 uh, data register. And after shifting, all, uh, and we end the piles being shifted into D0 and always compare it with uh, 15375 decimal, okay, to find out whether uh, bit 10 to bit 13, bit 0 to bit 3 is. 0010 0. so this is the result after we end so as you can see that uh, after we we take the result and then we compare it with uh, this 2050 okay so obviously you can see that this 0111 0101 is not 0010 that we want okay so in this case we will not take uh, bit 4 to bit 9 inside D0 at this moment okay and let us see the next example okay if let's say this string of data is being shifted into uh, D0 uh, data register okay we, we do uh, N and we give an N instruction we compare as usual okay and this is the result alright so if let's say we compare it with uh, 2050 decimal so you can see that, yes, this is actually the pattern that we are looking for. And now we are going to round number four, okay, to extract uh, this bit four to bit nine, all right? Okay, round number four. All right, so and, and then bit, uh, sorry, bit register M3 be activated, okay, and then now we can proceed to round number 4 of the logic. Okay, so what the round number 4 is doing is actually extracting the diagnostic code after we identify uh, the right code is actually sitting inside D0 data register. So based on the example given just now, once we already identify this is the right pattern that we are looking for, so immediately, uh, we turn on M0, uh, M3, sorry, M3, and this M3 is going to end uh, the, the, the data string in D0 with 1008. Okay, if let's say you turn this 1008 into binary, it is actually look like this, all 0 except uh, bit 4 to bit 9, they are all 1, because we are only interested in this 6 bit, we would like to extract this 6 bit out okay and after we extract uh, this six bit out we, we we use a move instruction to transfer it to another data register number five and you can see that this is the value transfer to data register number five but uh, we would like to get a decimal value an accurate decimal value 
So in order to get an accurate decimal value, we have to shift this uh, six bit to the right hand side by four. Okay, so this is the reason why we use rotate instruction by four bits. Okay, so after we shift to the right by four, it will be uh, one one zero one one one. If we check in the manual, what is one one zero one one one? Okay, after we shift it four bits to the right, right. Actually, this is how it looks like in the manual. One 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 zero zero one zero is the start code, and the diagnostic code is one one zero one one one. So it actually means the safety related output are deactivated, and safety related outputs also deactivated. So you can see that by doing the decoding on into this uh, diagnostic code, we immediately know what happened to the safety devices uh, uh, connected to this HR6 safety relay as well as the, uh, the status of the safety relay itself. And from there, the operator, whoever we use the system or machine can immediately respond based on uh, this, uh, the status feedback uh, to the PLC. All right, that's all for today's video tutorial. Thank you for watching.